It's a show about a bunch of teenagers who don't know just how good they had it. Fighting independently of the adult authorities in their lives. Can't just go along with the flow, have to do it their way, prove that they're just as capable, and start a superhero cartoon revolution that sets the foundation for a whole new generation of fans. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Teen Titans. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order today. One of the only ways I've found to escape the constant barrage of being online is being on my bike. It's good for getting exercise, fresh air, and feeling better about myself, but best for disconnecting from a virtual world content on doing the opposite for me. Raycon earbuds literally help me tune out the rest of the world and focus on myself and my health. They feature simple push-button navigation, noise isolation, and custom gel tips, so you can find the perfect, most comfortable in-ear fit. Raycon earbuds are water and sweat resistant and hold an eight hour charge. They have a storage case that gives you another 32 hours on top of that. You can purchase a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of those other big name tech brands. Use my link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash toygalaxy to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash toygalaxy to get 15% off your first purchase today. And thanks again to Raycon. Teen Titans is an animated series that originally aired 65 episodes over five seasons from July of 2003 to January of 2006, followed by a movie in September of 2006 to put a bow on the whole thing. A purposeful rebuke to the gritty, dramatic, mature superhero shows of the late 90s and early 2000s. Teen Titans follows a handful of teenage superheroes in their daily adventures protecting Jump City and the greater world from superpowered criminals and murderers, while desperately trying to navigate all the highs and lows of adolescence. When they're not trying to figure out how to get more food in the fridge, they're striking back against evil from their T-shaped headquarters just offshore. Leader and martial arts expert Robin is joined by Cyborg, the muscle and tech expert, Starfire, the otherworldly princess, Beast Boy, the shape-shifting comic relief, and Raven, the mysterious cosmic demon girl. You'll never mistake them for the Justice League, and that's the way they like it. Cooler, funnier, and way more interesting than the Boomers and Gen Xers. They are the Teen Titans. Teen Titans began in the pages of DC Comics. Robin made his first appearance in Detective Comics number 39, cover dated April 1940. Robin's popularity kicked off an era saturated with younger versions of the adult superheroes that were more relatable and more representative of the kids reading the books. Aqualad, Wonder Girl, Speedy, Kid Flash, each of them an avatar for the kids who aspired to be as smart, as strong, and as powerful as the superheroes whose names were splashed across the covers. Becoming Batman would take some time to grow into a lifetime goal. Robin was something that could be achieved now. Those DC Comics sidekicks started teaming up in the pages of The Brave and the Bold in 1964, coincidentally around the same time that Marvel Comics started taking up space on the racks with teen-centric heroes like the Uncanny X-Men and the Amazing Spider-Man. Brave and the Bold issue 54 featured Robin, Kid Flash, and Aqualad. Six issues later, they recruited Wonder Girl and started using the name Teen Titans. In January of 1966, they got their own official title simply called Teen Titans. By 1973, the book had run its course, canceled after issue 43. Three years later, it resumed with issue 44 and hung around for nine more issues. By issue 53, the Teen Titans recognized that, perhaps, as full-grown adults, they didn't want to be called teens anymore. They all went their separate ways to prepare for the day that they would be called to replace their mentors as full-time members of the Justice League. But before that would happen, they returned rebooted and ready for a new series in 1980, this time by writer Marv Wolfman and artist George Perez, who not only wanted to bring the team back, but further distanced them from their sidekick origins, and the indignity of being Lil' Justice Leaguers. Original team members Robin, Kid Flash, and Wonder Girl returned, but this time joined by Beast Boy, Starfire, Raven, and Cyborg, new characters with no adult analog, existing purely as who they were without drafting on the popularity of an established character. It was this version of the team that solidified the Teen Titans' role in the DC Universe, established the foundation for their individual origins and the team's origin, introduced their rogues gallery, and told the stories that brought readers back over the course of nearly two decades. In 1989, Batman was a hit at the box office, sparking interest in comic book-based properties with mainstream audiences. The success of that film and its 1992 sequel, Batman Returns, resulted in Batman the Animated Series, which had a similar effect for superheroes and their depiction in animation. Developed by Bruce Timm and Eric Radomski, Batman the Animated Series was built for an older, more mature audience. It was designed as a purposeful rebuke of the traditional depictions of superheroes on television and specifically animation, shows like Super Friends or the 1966 Batman and Robin television series. Batman the Animated Series spawned similarly themed animated superhero shows for adults like HBO's 
Spawn. Over the decade that followed, Batman the Animated Series evolved into a fully interconnected DC universe of animation with shows like Superman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, The Zeta Project, Justice League, and Justice League Unlimited. In the early 90s, Glenn Murakami was hoping to get into comics when he accidentally got into animation. As a fan of cartoons and anime, he assumed that it would be too difficult to break into animation, so comics was a more realistic path. Until his high school friend accidentally got into animation and helped recruit him. Warner Brothers was hiring artists to work on Batman the Animated Series. Murakami was able to get his portfolio into the hands of both Eric Radomski and Bruce Timm. While they didn't think much of his storyboarding, they recognized his overall drawing ability and figured they could train him as they went. And his career grew from there, with Murakami eventually describing himself as Bruce Timm's right-hand man. Murakami did it all, from character designs to storyboards. He was a producer on Superman the Animated Series, creator and producer on Batman Beyond, and producer on Justice League. He helped steer the decade of superhero animation on television and in movies, which made him the prime candidate to create the series that would rebel against it. Five teenage superheroes. Secret identities? None. Your animal force cannot protect you forever! Schoolwork? As if... No! Angst? Plenty. Titans! Trouble! Whoa! Oh man, we gotta get out of here! Teen Titans, coming up next. Welcome to the big time. Isn't that awesome? Super. On Toonami. In 2001, Sam Register was named Cartoon Network's new Senior Vice President of Development, and one of his goals was to adapt Teen Titans, a comic he had grown up reading. As part of the process, he invited Murakami to pitch his vision for what the series could be. As Murakami told the story, quote, He said he wanted something different. He needed a show more for 6 to 11 year olds. I think when I tell the story of the show's development, it seems like a very corporate decision. But, you know, it's a very valid decision. It was something different from the kind of shows that Bruce Timm had established. And having worked on all those shows before, it made it easier to do a show that was just different from the previous ones. Murakami grew up reading the same Teen Titans comics that Register had, the 1980s roster and mythology established by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. So it was a no-brainer where they were going to draw their inspiration from. It was the perfect roster to illustrate the difference between the Teen Titans and the well-established Justice League already on television. They weren't stupid. Of course Robin was the lead. Distancing yourself from the previous generation is one thing. Fumbling the stockpiled cash of Batman marketability after 10 years of development would have been more appropriate if the show was called Suicide Squad. Pause for laughter. Murakami was inspired by his love of anime in general and cutting-edge new shows coming out of Japan like Foodie Kuri. Through his time on Superman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond, he developed a relationship with and appreciation for the work of Japanese animation studio TMS Entertainment, whose portfolio of work goes back to the 1960s and includes productions like Lupin the Third, Ulysses 31, Space Cobra, and The Mighty Orbots. Murakami pulled from other Japanese television influences like Toei's Super Sentai series and specifically Toei's cyborg character Kikaida when developing a look for Cyborg. If it weren't for shows like Cyborg 009 and Speed Racer having been favorites of his growing up, Teen Titans might have been a very different show. Teen Titans theme was composed by Andy Strummer and performed in both English and Japanese by the Japanese band Puffy Amiyumi. For the most part, the English version was used, but occasionally, depending on the broadcast region, the Japanese version would be substituted on episodes that were more focused on humor than drama. Teen Titans first aired on Cartoon Network in July of 2003. Initial reactions to the series from people outside the target demographic was mixed, with IGN saying it, quote, fails to live up to the source material or its potential. It's bogged down by an overly cartoony style that looks more like anime without most of the good points. From its after-school special style attempts at storytelling to its painfully annoying signature tune, Teen Titans fails to meet even the lowest of expectations for this series. People inside the demographic disagreed. They thought it was great. Teen Titans was immediately the best performing Cartoon Network series for boys 6 to 11. The ratings increased with each episode, making it the most successful Cartoon Network series for 6 to 11 year olds, averaging over half a million viewers per episode. Season 1 ended its run on Cartoon Network in November of 2003, at which time it began airing Saturday mornings on broadcast television as part of the kids' WB programming. Ratings on WB weren't as strong as they had been on Cartoon Network, but the combination of the two guaranteed that the series would continue. Cartoon Network capitalized on that success with an order for 13 more episodes and then two additional seasons after that. A fifth season brought the total to 65, the minimum number of episodes to be rerun in the future in daily syndication. Teen Titans was one of Cartoon Network's most popular series winning industry awards and producing a mountain of licensed merchandise across the spectrum of home goods and entertainment media. Bandai released action figures in multiple scales along with vehicles and playsets. 
Nintendo released Teen Titans for the Game Boy Advance in 2005, followed by Teen Titans 2 in 2006. Teen Titans was released for PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Nintendo GameCube that same year. Teen Titans was canceled after 65 episodes, which left fans wondering why. The answer is, it depends who you ask. Some say the plan for season six wasn't strong enough despite the fact that they were well into development. One idea was to rebrand the series, similar to the way Batman the Animated Series had evolved into the new Batman Adventures, or how Justice League became Justice League Unlimited. Take all the new characters from season five and have a larger, more variable roster depending on the needs of the story and call the show New Teen Titans. Some say it was Cartoon Network who made the decision. Others blame WB. Others have stated that it could have been either a ratings drop after season four or Mattel Mattel who made the call to kill the show since Bandai had the toy rights for the series. Mattel didn't want any competition after becoming the licensee for Cartoon Network in general in 2006. Another plausible theory is that it was canceled due to internal data, specifically for committing the crime of cannibalizing demographics. Teen Titans had crossed over into audiences that were already being targeted by other shows in the Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network library and was stealing from their viewership and merchandise sales. See. As the theory goes, everything about television and licensed merchandise sales is carefully targeted according to very specific, very expensive demographic data. There are products intended for boys age 6 to 11, and there are products intended for girls age 6 to 11. The theory suggests that if a show like Teen Titans starts to bring in too many dollars and eyeballs from too many demographics, then it starts messing up all the corporate data and budgets for how various products and shows are going to be planned into the future. Better to kill it than to have to redo an Excel spreadsheet. And like, I can't argue with that. <laughs> After the series was canceled, a final feature film called Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo was produced that brought the series to a proper conclusion. It focused on Starfire, the only character of the core five who had not had a series dedicated to her. It premiered at San Diego Comic-Con in 2006 before airing on Cartoon Network and Kids WB in September before being released on DVD in 2007. As of this video, the entire series and Trouble in Tokyo are available on HBO Max as well as other streaming services for rent or purchase. The Teen Titans returned in a new series in 2013 called Teen Titans Go. The title of the series inspired by the battle cry of the Titans from the 2003 series. A spiritual successor in many ways, it too was a purposeful rebuke of the series that came before it. That said, in 2018, Teen Titans Go starred in a feature film called Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Released in theaters, it featured a mid credit scene wherein the Teen Titans from 2003 are shown hacking into the film and declaring that they, quote, may have found a way back. That set up 2019's Teen Titans Go vs. Teen Titans, a crossover movie released digitally and on DVD. It crossed over both the 2003 and the 2013 Teen Titans universes, as well as Teen Titans across dimensions through the power of... The Multiverse. The perfect way to settle the bad blood between viewers who grew up with the 2003 Teen Titans and the new generation that only knew the 2013 Titans. And fan service for every other version from the tiny titans of the comics through the darker, more mature titans of Warner Brothers DC Animation. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Legacy characters are going to be reinvented every five to ten years as long as there is value in renewing the usage based on copyright law requiring you to demonstrate ownership of a property lest it fall into public domain. Yeah. <laughs> A wolf. Despite it only having 65 episodes, it was spread out over time, allowing it to evolve and grow up with the audience. The six-year-olds who started watching it from day one were on the verge of being teens themselves when it concluded. What started as a light-hearted visual counter to the series that had come before it became a beloved story with increasing stakes as relationships between the characters and the audience deepened. The disappointment felt by fans upon its cancellation a reflection of their love for a series that seemed to grow up too fast. Hurry up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, if you would like early access to the videos ad-free as well as behind-the-scenes features, sneak peeks at upcoming projects, and exclusive monthly podcast about the show, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. And let us know in the comments down below which version of the Teen Titans from across the multiverse you connected with over the years. I prefer the 2003 Titans, but I appreciate the 2013 Titans. Having never read any of the comics back in the day, I have to disqualify them. I was a diehard Marvel kid growing up. To me and my friends, DC stood for Don't Collect. Ooh. Yes, that included Batman, although we all snuck a few issues in. It's always more fun when it's dangerous. <laughs> Cut.